There is playing God, and then there is what the Soviet Union planned to do. We're not talking about building a simple dam or a canal. We're talking about seizing the largest rivers in Siberia, which flow north into the Arctic Ocean, and forcing them to flow backwards, thousands of kilometers south, to remake the very climate of a continent. And how did they plan to carve this new path through the Earth? In part, by using dozens of peaceful nuclear explosions. This is the story of the most ambitious, most arrogant, and most terrifying engineering project you've never heard of. To understand this madness, we must first understand the problem. In the mid-20th century, the Soviet Union had a dream to turn the arid deserts of Central Asia, places like Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, into a massive cotton-producing paradise. To do this, they diverted the two great rivers that fed the Aral Sea, the Amu Darya and Sia Darya, to irrigate their endless cotton fields. The plan worked for a while, but it came at a terrible cost. Starved of its water, the Aral Sea began to die. It shrank, leaving behind a salty, toxic desert in what would become one of the worst man-made environmental disasters in history. The Soviets had created a water crisis, and now they needed a solution on a scale only they could imagine. The idea was simple, brutal, and breathtakingly arrogant. If the South had no water, they would simply take it from the North. The plan was to build a colossal network of dams and canals to capture the flow of Siberia's mighty rivers, like the Ob and the Irtysh, and redirect them southwards. This Siberian anti-river would be a 2,500 kilometer long man-made artery pumping life into the dying south. The scale was almost incomprehensible, and to excavate the massive canals quickly and cheaply, the use of nuclear explosions was seriously considered. The idea was to line up nuclear charges and detonate them sequentially, blasting a new riverbed across the landscape in an instant. For decades, this project was the dream of Soviet engineers and party officials, a symbol of communism's power to conquer nature itself. But it also sparked a rare and brave opposition. Scientists warned that diverting so much fresh water from the Arctic could change the ocean's salinity, alter global weather patterns, and even accelerate the melting of the polar ice caps. The environmental consequences were unknown, but potentially apocalyptic. As the project's astronomical costs became clear, and as Mikhail Gorbachev's era of glasnost, or openness, began, a new generation of environmentalists and writers spoke out. The era of brute force megaprojects was ending. In 1986, the Politburo, facing immense pressure and a looming economic crisis, officially canceled the project for good. The Siberian River Reversal Project remains a ghost on old blueprints, a testament to humanity's incredible ambition and its equally incredible hubris. It's a cautionary tale about the unintended consequences of trying to bend the planet to our will. Sideways, history isn't just about what happened, but also about what almost happened. And sometimes, those stories are the most important ones to tell. Subscribe to Sideways History, because the biggest stories are often the ones that were too dangerous to become reality. We'll see you next time.